If we haven't had the privilege of meeting just yet, some of you are like, that's not Pastor Jeremy. He has no hair. Uh, <laughs> we haven't had the privilege of meeting yet. My name is Daniel Groves, and I have the incredible honor of serving as the teaching pastor here at Hope City. And uh, I'm going to hang out with you this weekend. Our pastors, can we honor our pastors? Can we give Pastor Jeremy and Jennifer a hand? Now, come on, you can give God praise for the incredible yes that the Fosters made six years ago. Y'all, we've done so much in six years, and I'm excited for what God has done, but we're super excited about what's next because we believe what, what is next is God's best for sure. But Pastor Jeremy, I love that his heart for this mission, this movement called Hope City, isn't a sprint, but it's a marathon. And so they believe in longevity. And so he was like, hey, man, I'm going to get recharged so that we can come back strong and we can end this year strong. So how many of y'all are grateful for a pastor that wants longevity? Come on. Now, listen, last week we kicked off week one of Summer at Hope City. We're in week two this week. But if you did not catch last week, I want to encourage you to go back and check out week number one of Summer at Hope City. We talked about unshakable faith. How many of y'all were encouraged last week about unshakable faith? faith. We talked about the balance of the waiting season when sometimes it feels like God is quiet. The balance between the promise and his provision. And will you worship him? Will you still pursue him? Will you walk with him even in the midst of the not yet season or the no, it's not good for you season? And so it develops unshakable faith. So I want to encourage you to go back to the archives because today is going to kind of layer to part two of that because today we're going to, we're going to talk about unstoppable favor. Thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. If you're taking down notes, write that down. Unstoppable favor. Favor is uh, kind of a big deal. Uh, God's favor is right up there with faith, grace, and the mercy of God. It's actually mentioned, the word favor is actually mentioned in the Bible over 70 times. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26, at the end of every service, whether it's one of our service hosts or Pastor Jeremy and myself, we speak a declaration. The Bible calls this the benediction or the greatest blessing in the Bible. It says, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Turn his countenance towards you. And may he give you peace. Such a great blessing. But there's this moment in there that says, may he be gracious to you. When it says, may he be gracious to you, and we declare this over our church, we're literally saying, may he put favor on your life. May he cover your life and family with Favor. Come on, somebody say favor. Favor. Again, favor is a big deal. It's a big deal. And every person that was ever greatly used by God had to experience God's favor. We looked at Noah's life last week and how his obedience and his consistency in the 120 years of waiting for God to show up between the promise and the provision, he stayed focused on what God had asked. And Moses, I'm sorry, Noah experienced God's favor. The Bible says in Genesis 6, 8, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. We also looked at Moses last week and how he had to wait for 40 years between the promise and the provision before he experienced the favor of God, but he stayed committed to the assignment of God and the hand of God was on his life. Exodus 33, 17 says it this way, and the Lord said to Moses, this very thing that you have spoken, I will do for you have found Favor, come on, somebody say favor. Favor in my sight. And this part right here blesses me. It says, and I know you by name. See, if you're a student of the Bible, the Holy Spirit will pull different moments out of verses and it'll make it, it'll it'll become personal to you. I had a pastor friend, this is super cheesy, but you're gonna remember it. He says, every day when I'm in the word, every day when I pursue the presence of God, he said, it's like the jack in the box. It's like I open the Bible and turn the page and it's really good reading. All of a sudden, one day, pop revelation. That's super cheesy, but y'all are going to remember it. And when I was reading Exodus 33, 17, and I was studying this week for unstoppable favor, the part that jumped off the page was, and I know you by name. I love that. Someone needs to hear that. No matter where you've been, no matter what you're walking through or where you'll go, he knows you by name. And he is just one mention of his name away from being right there in real time. As a good, good father, closer than a brother, the closest friend you'll ever experience, God is right there, and he wants to unlock favor in your life. So we encourage you to take down notes here at Hope City. So at Katie, Woodlands, online, you may be watching in Dubai, get something that you can write down, and if you've got a device, you've got an iPhone or a droid, praise God, I don't don't understand, pescatarian. Presbyterian, sorry, it's different. 
No, no, take down notes. Why? Because they say that when you take down notes in real time, your, your, your retention rate goes to 35% in real time. 35%, that's, per, that's pretty high. If you take down notes and go back, your retention rate goes up to 90 to 95%. I wanna encourage you to take down notes. If you're taking down notes, write this down. The favor of God belongs to us. Make it personal as a daughter, as a son. The favor of God belongs to me. Because many Christians believe they have to somehow earn this favor. But the truth is, we already have his favor. Now, some of y'all are like, well, Daniel, I just, I, I, it seems like everybody else has that type of favor. I don't really have that type of luck. Y'all don't need luck when you've got God's favor. I'm gonna say it again. You don't need luck when you have God's favor. It's not something you can earn. It actually belongs to you. And I'm telling you, as a king's kid, as a son and a daughter, it belongs to you. Psalms 5 verse 12 says this, for surely you, O Lord, bless the righteous and you surround them with a shield of your favor. Now, when we say the righteous, it doesn't mean perfect. Righteous is literally talking about being in right standing. Let me break down even more. Right standing is to be in relationship. So I'm going on 17 years of marriage to my beautiful wife next month. Let's go. Some of y'all are like, how? I don't even know how this worked out. How did you, how did you convince her to marry you? Like I said, God, keep her blinded too. <laughs> Lord, let her see me with flowing hair and lots of money. <laughs> okay. No, but we're in relationship. And we stay in right standing and we continue to build our relationship. It's the th same thing. It's saying, listen, as you pursue God, as you spend time in his presence, for surely you, O Lord, bless the righteous, those that are in relationship with you, and you surround them with the shield of your favor. This is massive, and I need somebody to grab this. The favor of God belongs to me. Yes. The favor of God belongs to the real you. See, we live in a time and a society now where everything is filtered. How many of y'all jumped on the bandwagon this week and you made yourself look like a cartoon character? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like everybody's doing Disney, like, well, I'm gonna jump on it and I'm gonna look like a whole Disney crew. And y'all did that. We live in a very filtered, polished, everything is perfect. And so I told my wife, I said, babe, we're, we're at the six month mark and I'm sick of not being the real me. So I, I thought today, today's the day that I'm gonna, I wanna start being the real me. I feel like that I've, I've been faking it for too long and I just don't have, I don't have the ability to, to, to you know, fake it any longer. It's time for me to, to just be who I'm called to be. And haters are gonna say this is fake. This is Photoshop. It's like, it's like party. It's like my wife's hair in the back. <laughs> it's, it's like party in the back and Bieber in the front. It's a little business. You take me serious here and then I'm over here just hanging out. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is a 1030 special. Amen. It's a high, it's a premium wig, y'all. I paid some good money for this. Here's the reality. We put on these facades. We put on these masks. No pun intended, because you know, people still wear masks, we still wear masks, I get it. But we put on these masks and we say, God, will you bless me? God, will you show me favor? And he's like, listen, I can't bless who you pretend to be. I can't bless or give favor to you, to who you pretend to be. Listen, be the best you God's created you to be. Everybody else is taken. All right, I gotta hide this, because it looks like a dead ferret, and it's gonna be weird. God wants us to be who he's authentically called us to be. And when you surrender your entire life and you live open-handed and authentic, he will release his favor over your life. And as you pursue this relationship, this, this daily discipline of being in relationship with him, Proverbs 8, chapter 35 says, for whoever finds me finds life and obtains, watch, favor from the Lord. Here's the other thing that's amazing. God's favor rescued us and saved us because of his grace and his mercy, but it's all tied to favor. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight in the Amplified says this, for it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion, and here's the word again, favor, drawing us to Christ, that you would be saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved, here's the word again from earlier, gracious gift of God, it's a gift. So number one, we all have access to this and favor belongs to us. Number two, if you're taking down notes, we have access to God's favor through faith. 
Faith unlocks this type of access. We talked about unshakable faith last week. Unwavering, foundational faith unlocks access in your life. Has anybody ever had access to something that you found out you had access later on and you're like, I can't believe I had access to that. I can't believe that. Pastor Jeremy talked about a hotel he stayed in and like he was on the concierge floor and he'd gone down to the lobby every day and they're like, sir, you know, like three doors down, you have like unlimited access. He didn't know. At the end of the week, he found out. Well, I had my own experience. I travel a lot and, uh, I, and I'm in a lot of airports and so I was on the phone with a friend of mine and he's like, bro, how long's your layover? I'm like, that's crazy. It's like two hours because they've delayed the flight. He's like, bro, just go to the Delta Sky Club. Get a cup of coffee. And I was like, ah, I don't have access to like, it was like 50 bucks to get in for one day. Like it better be Faint, the fanciest cup of coffee I've ever had. If I'm gonna drop $50 on a day pass, he's like, well, don't, what, you should go over to the, don't you have United, you have like United status, you should go over there. I said, no, I literally don't have access. He's like, I thought you had any named, I thought you had a specific American Express card. I said, I, yeah, I do. And he goes, huh. bro, how long have you had that card? I'm like, oh, a couple minutes. <laughs> so, a, few, a few days. And he's like, bro, how long have you had that card? I was like, I don't know, like a year. He's like, dude, you've had access. That card gives you access to every Sky Lounge in the world. You can literally walk up in there and just bloop, and just scan the thing, and they'll let you right in. I was like, no way. So I'm on the phone with him, and I'm, I'm walking in like, <laughs> and the lady scans my pass says, thank you, Mr. Gross. I'm like, that's it? She's like, mm-hmm. I'm like, this whole time I've had access to premium baguettes and Danishes? <laughs> like, I could have filled a cup of coffee and said, I don't want this today, and just poured it out. I had that... God wants to give us access to his favor, but we have to know that we have access to this type of favor. And it all is unlocked in his presence. So when I hear that people are trying to do this thing on their own and just surviving life and they're just in cruise control, there is so much more that God has for your family, your future family in your life. And I'm just audacious enough I said this last week, I just, this whole summer, I wanna start expecting the unexpected. Like, it's only crazy until it happens. Like, I wanna start believing for crazy miracles and breakthrough. I wanna start believing God for crazy big things. Amen, y'all can hook up with me. But I also wanna believe for small little intricacies, like I wanna start believing for really good parking spots. (laughs) That's That's a blessing. I want to start believing, I'm audacious enough to believe for parking spots. I'm audacious enough to believe that when they tell me at a restaurant like Guadalajara, it's going to be 35 minutes for a wait. I'm like, hey, hey, can I get some favor? (laughs) Like, I'm audacious enough to believe that when I wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror, I say, today, I will walk in favor. Now, some of y'all are like, well, that's that whole blab it, grab it. No, that's the Bible. Psalms 92, 18 says that blessed is the man. No, watch this, watch this. When we speak. You want to be blessed? You want to walk in favor? Life and death's in the power of your tongue. And it says to choose life, to speak life. Job 22, 28 says, when you decree a thing or speak a thing, it shall be established. Some of y'all are speaking the wrong things. I'm just not that lucky. I just don't have that type of favor. That happens to other people. Change the way you speak and change the way you think and watch God change your life. I'm preaching better than y'all are responding. I'm telling you. I went on this trip, I was on the West Coast, and the pastor was like, hey, we're gonna go to this really cool little area, and he's like, bro, I said, man, there's so many cars here. He's like, brother, I live in the fog. And I was like, you do, it's so hazy here, I don't know how you get any vitamin D. And he's like, no, man, I live in the fog, the favor of God. I was like, that is cheesy, but I'm never forgetting that. And he's like, you watch, we're gonna do one loop, and we're gonna get a perfect spot. I'm like, okay. And I'm not joking, we're pulling up to this place. It's like this cool outdoor, like kind of farmer's market area. This lady walks out and says, hey, I got a parking spot right here. Do you guys want it? I'm like, that's unbelievable. (laughs) Like people are leaving just to give us their spot. And he said, I'm audacious enough to believe it. You can believe it or you can choose not to believe it. The Bible says that everything Jesus walked in and lived out here on this earth, we have the same access to it. This is Bible, this isn't my opinion. This is what the Bible says in Luke chapter two, verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with both God and man. And so if Christ lives in you and he dwells in you, then we should have the same access to that increase of wisdom, stature, and favor. Let me take it a little deeper. Galatians chapter two, verse 20 says it this way. I have been, so when you've given your life to Jesus, and I'm gonna give you an opportunity at the end if you don't know him. But when you walk with him as a daughter or as a son, it says this, I have been crucified with Christ. 
It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Everything you need is already inside of you. And you have help. You have help from the Holy Spirit, and you have the kind of access to open up incredible opportunities and doors in your life. And this isn't about process. This isn't a prosperity message. Y'all, when you have favor in the area of healing in your life, it's a good thing. When you have favor in the area of family and marriage and, and your kids walking with the Lord, and you have favor in every area of your life, I'm telling you, we have access to this type of favor. Somebody say all access. All access. The Bible says in Matthew 6, if you've been around Hope City for any amount of time, you've heard Pastor Jeremy quote this. I've quoted it. This is fundamental faith verses. It says this, but seek first. How often? Another translation says above all else. Another translation says as your first priority, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Again, that's relationship. And all these things will be added unto you. How much? All these things. This includes the favor of God. Now, I, I've, I've told this story back, throwback to uh, Memorial Days. How many of y'all were part of Memorial Days back in the day? Okay, cool, cool, cool. How many of y'all are like brand new in the past like year and a half, two years, three years? Amazing. Man, we love y'all. So we got new family. I love it. Uh, so I told this story back in the day, but I was traveling to Sacramento. The same guy that lives in the fog, uh, he was like, hey man, I'm, I'm kind of like an in-between chaplain for the Sacramento Kings. I don't know if you like basketball, but if you'd like to go to the game tonight, I can hook you up. Like, we'll have all access. And he's like, unless you just want to go back and rest, uh, uh, and you know, if you, do you want to go? I was like, does a shark like snacks? Yeah, I want to go. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> don't you threaten me with a good time. Like, I'm there. Like, I'm going to be wearing a whole Sacramento King onesie. Like, like a one piece with a zipper under the el like an armpit. Like it'll be like I'll be full on fan status and I don't like the Kings, but I'll be there. And he was like, okay. And he, so he was like, I'll have your tickets at will call. All you gotta do is walk up and everything will be taken care of. I'm like, thank you. So I Uber to the stadium, fired up. I called Jackie. I'm like, this is super cool. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen, but like, I've got all access. This is gonna be amazing. So I go up to Will Call and I was like, hello, hey, uh, uh, my name's Daniel Gross. And the lady's like, she's flipping through like cards. Like they didn't even have on a computer. I'm like, come on, Kings. Rockets are better. Okay, so. <laughs> Rockets will be better in Jesus' name, God. We're prophetically speaking it. Hey. I just felt the glory because we needed some, we need some, we need intervention. Like heaven has to touch earth. Okay. So, so she's flipped through cards and she said, uh, I don't have a Daniel Groves, but I have a Brenda Groves. I'm like, that's not my name. They messed up the name. I was like, well, Brenda's my middle name, so I got. Uncomfortable, but okay, so I had the tickets, and so I go in, because I know I've got good seats, but I went in and did what I was supposed to do. I did the big 300-ounce souvenir cup. I'm like, I'm gonna do it up big. So God, you should not be drinking that much soda, by the way. That's not a good idea. I got the big souvenir cup, and then I got the nachos with the yellow number six and the formaldehyde. And like the only way to get it down is the stale chips. So I got it all. I'm ready. I look like a fan. And I walk up to a lady who looked like she knew what she was doing. She had a flashlight and like a little clipboard. And I said, excuse me, ma'am, wh uh, where are these seats down here? Because I'm expecting to be, I should be able to touch the floor. Like, I'm, and she said, mm-mm, mm-mm. And I said, mm, okay. And she said, uh, you are all the way up there. And I said, where? She said, when you feel that you have not gone far enough, <laughs> just keep going. All the way to the tippity top. I'm like, okay. And she's like, just keep walking. I'm like, I got it. I've got it. And so I walk, literally, it was, for, it was forever. And I was at the very, very last row. My head was against the wall. And I'm like, this is not all access at all. Like, it's the nosebleed section. I'm literally bleeding to my nachos. Like, this is... It's terrible. I'm sitting up there like, God, I, I could have, God, you, I thought this was all, you were opening up doors for me. God, like, don't you remember? I tithe. Like, don't you remember <laughs> me? Like, and so I'm sitting there. I'm literally having to watch the pre warm ups on my phone because it's so, so I'm sitting there about 15, 20 minutes and all of a sudden I see click, 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 click. And I see her. I'm like, what? She said, click, click. I'm like, me? She said, click, click. I was like, I don't know Morse code. So I'm like, who fell down a well? Like, what's, and she's like, come here. So I, I walk down, like it's forever. Like I'm walking down, I got my nachos. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she goes, you must know somebody. I said, uh-huh. And she said, they want you down there. I said, do they? Hold my nachos. <laughs> and so I walk down and these 
Two huge security guys look like Old Testament giants. Like they parted and they let me down. And this guy meets me in the fancy suit and hands me this sticker. And he goes, there's only a handful of people that have this sticker and it's an all access pass. No security won't even talk to you. I said, so you're like, I'm like a deputy. He's like, that's too far. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he was like, but you, this is your seats. You have access to food in the back. And you want to walk back there? I was like, I'm going to stay out here first. Like, come on, cousins, you can make that shot. Like I'm yelling at the players. Like. It's ridiculous. And so I end up in the back and I, I end up meeting the owners and the chaplain walks over. He's like, man, I'm sorry about the mix up. And he's like, this is my friend Daniel. And he's like, he's a great singer. And the owner's like, sing me something. And I'm like, ah. Uh, and he's like, sing something. Danny Gokey sings. I'm like, is that the only white person you can think of? I'm like, Danny Gokey sings. I'm like, okay. And he goes, sing me something. I was like, never should have made it. It was all the way at the top. <laughs> so... He's like, you got a pretty good voice. I want to invite you back. Bring your wife out. I want you to sing the national anthem at a Sacramento Kings game. Y'all, this is happening in real time. This is like all access. And so he's like, go over there and get you some food. So I walk over, and these shrimp are huge. They're like the size of lobsters, like GMO pumped into these things. Like, mm, this was not okay. Like, these things were not right. And so I'm getting food. True story. I hear, don't eat all the shrimp. And I turn, it's shack. And I was like, it's enough food for all of a shack, like, <laughs> it's a big guy. That's all access in the natural. The Bible says that the spirit realm is even more real than the natural realm. Pastor Jeremy says all the time that everything is spiritual all the time. How much more access to, does God want to unlock in your family? How much access and favor does God want to unlock in joy and wisdom and clarity and peace? Come on, how much access could you unlock in your life if you would just recognize you have access to it? The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 4, you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. The more you pursue his presence, the closer you get in relationship to his heart, the more you'll begin to see the assignment and plan for your life unfolding. That's why we want you to know God and find freedom and discover your purpose so that ultimately you can make a difference. There is a call and an assignment on your life, and God unlocks this type of favor in your life through the call. And I'm audacious enough to just believe that the Lord establishes our steps and there's favor connected to it. Yeah. And favor doesn't always look exactly like we think. A lot of people ask for favor, but in return, we're asking God for favors. Wow. God's favor is the guarantee of his presence and the provision of his power to accomplish special purpose and the assignment in your life. It's intended not simply for our convenience, but for his purpose. Look at this in Psalms 90, verse 17. May the favor of the Lord, may the favor of the Lord, our God, rest on us. Come on, just lift your hands and say, rest on me, Lord. Come on, may the favor of the Lord rest on us, establishing the work of our hands for us. Yes, establishing the work of our hands. You have to have God's favor to fulfill the calling of God on your life. And while you can't achieve or manipulate it, there are better ways to position yourself to receive this type of favor. And I'm going to give you one super way, supernatural way to unlock this type of favor. You ready for it? Just get in his presence every day. That's it. It's all found in his presence. You want everything to begin to line up. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to have bad days and messy days and frustrating days. John 16, 33 said we're going to go through things but if you want to walk in God's favor in mountaintop moments or valley moments, it's found in his presence. And the favor of God chases after you and is with you all of your life. Psalms 30 verse 5 literally says his favor lasts a lifetime. It says you can count on it. You can count on the Lord to give you his favor in every season of your life. That favor will sustain you through every season. And if everything's going well in your life and tangible blessings are surrounding you, don't feel entitled to this favor because you didn't earn it and none of us deserve it. Without God, none of it's possible. So keep walking in faith and remain in his favor. But if favor seems maybe hard right now, maybe some of you are like, I'm just not connecting because nothing seems to be aligning for me right now. Everything seems to be out of control. I don't seem to have that type of favor. Favor is never bound by circumstances. It can track you down and bless you even in the middle of the hardest times. Maybe you're stuck in a dysfunctional situation or a place that you just seem, nah, I just can't get out of it. His favor never stops. And I want to encourage you today, never stop looking for it. And as you're looking, pay attention 
to what God has put in front of you today. Because in big moments and in intricacy, little moments of your life, I'm telling you, he's doing more than you know. And when you pray for his favor, I've seen this so many times in my life, a lot of times God will respond with an opportunity. And it may come in the form of a simple instruction, but your obedience, our obedience, will determine whether or not we walk in the abundance of the opportunity. Last week we talked about Noah, I mentioned him up top. What if Noah would have gotten distracted by everything else around him, he would have never fulfilled the assignment on his life. Now, this is a loaded story, but I, I was in, in, on, in the South and I was at this church and, and the pastor told me the story and he introduced me to this businessman. There was a guy in their church uh, who was a businessman in their church and he just really gravitated toward this family. And there was this guy, they had three kids and they were just struggling. So we went over to him and said, man, what's your story? He said, man, I'm struggling, can't find a job. Our car keeps breaking down, our minivan, I'm trying to fix it. It just, it just really feels like everything's falling apart. I just, I, just need, I just need a break. And the guy says, you don't need a break, man, you need God's favor. And so the next week, he brought him a CD and he handed him the CD. And he said, I want you to take this CD and I want you to listen to it today. I put this CD together for you. And the guy said, man, thanks a lot, I appreciate it. He got in his van, was gonna put the CD in, threw it up on the dash, and he's like, I don't wanna to listen to some Casting Crowns mixtape. I'm not like interested in just listening to Christian music. I don't wanna, I, I need a I need break. I need, I need something to change for me. Months went by, the businessman went back to him and said, hey man, you listen to the CD. And the guy said, ah, oh, you know what? I think my kid, I don't know if one of my kids grabbed it, but I'll listen to it today. I'm gonna to listen to it today. Went out, he's looking in the van, yelling to his kids, hey, has anybody seen that CD? They're like, we don't even know what you're talking about. He's like, I don't know, never mind. More months went by, the businessman walked up to him and said, hey man, did you ever listen to the CD? And he said, nah, I, man, I'll, I'll listen to it today. I'm gonna listen to it today. And the guy's like, okay. So now we're at almost nine months. The guy finds the CD, he's cleaning out his van. Still can't figure out things, man. Things are still falling apart. Still can't find a job. Life is just seeming to be just in such a mess. And he puts the CD in. It's the voice of the businessman calling this guy by name. And he said, man, when God moves in someone's life or he blesses someone, he uses people. God spoke to me and told me that if you would be willing to call me back, I wanna help you. Begins to quote scriptures over his life and puts the guy's name in the scriptures and begins to declare it over his life. And at the very end, he said, I want you to call me. I wanna go out and buy you guys a brand new vehicle. And, and, and I wanna go ahead and not only buy you a brand new vehicle, but I'm the owner of three different companies and I wanna start you out with a good salary because I want you to not feel a break, but I want you to feel favor and full benefits. Here's the reality, and I want you to write this down. We can't stop God's favor, but we can block it. You can't stop God's favor, but you can get in the way. That's when a negative mind gets in the way, a negative mindset. That's when a, a negative confession gets in the way. That's when free will gets in the way. That's when a bad attitude gets in the way. You know, the guy ended up picking up the phone, like, hey man, hey, I just listened to the CD, and the guy said, bro, I've already moved on. I've already filled that position. Why didn't you call me almost a year ago? You can't stop God's favor, but you can block it. And I wanna encourage you today, what in your life is blocking the blessing? What in your life are you, are you getting in the way of? Look at the person next to you and say, move, get out the way. Get out. <laughs> a little ludicrous throwback. I'm so sorry for that. I apologize. <laughs> no, but what area of your life are you getting in the way? Um, so last week I had mentioned this. We had, a, we had a rough week, and I was preaching my th way through that unshakable faith, and honestly, uh, unstoppable favor kind of was birthed out of this moment, but I took my daughter. We, we, we have a 36-foot camper, and we like to take it down to the beach, when I say beach, I mean Galveston. <laughs> I was like, why do I constantly have this weird rash on my calves? <laughs> Galveston, <laughs> oh Galveston, oh Gal Anyways, uh, my daughter Finley and I, we go to the storage place where our, our camper is, and this guy kind of pulls in a little fast, and I see it, and I've never had any major wrecks. Like, it's a miracle, because I drive like a bat out of Birmingham, but I, I was turning, I turned a little too sharp in the back of the trailer kicked out and there was a pole with this lip on it and it literally embedded into the trailer and I totaled our trailer. Like, I totaled our camper. We just bought it last year. And I remember my, my daughter, Finley, leans over and just grabs my arm. And the guy who was kind of pulling in a little reckless, I had the window down, he's like, I think you hit something. I was like, you're next. Uh, <laughs> slapping the, 
And so I get out and I walk around the corner. I'm all by myself and I take my Hope City hat. I'm not joking. And I throw it against the camper and I picked it back up because it's high quality merch. Y'all should pick up some today. <laughs> So I was like, that is not okay, Lord. I'm sorry for that. And I popped my hat back on. And, and so I'm standing out there and I'm like, God, God, I need, this is not good. This is going to mess up our entire summer. Like I'm going through all of this. And I call my wife and she picks up and she said, babe, for those of you who remember the story when she had an incident this earlier this year with an avocado and a knife, she said, I've cut a thousand avocados. Just one day I had an accident stabbed in my hand. Like it's, you, you never have these incidences. It, here's what I do know. You walk in favor. You are going to have favor. I don't know how God's going to do it, but you watch. He's already working. So I hung up the phone. I got in the car. My daughter looked over at me, 10 years old, and she said, you've handled this really well. And I was like, could you see the hat? You didn't see that. Okay. And then she said, plus dad, think about it. You always need stories for sermons. I'm like, not, not in the, I don't want to total a camper. So I call the place. They don't even have roadside assistance. And the guy said, I remember you. I, yeah, aren't you a pastor? And I said, yeah. He goes, man, I'm going to come out personally. Let me see if I can help you. He brings a crew out. It took four and a half hours. We're trying to figure out how to get it. Like it was literally embedded in this pole. We're trying not to do more damage. The guy who, it was kind of his issue. His dad came out, had a super manly beard. Like it was shocking. Like we, him and I were like squaring off. I'm like, <laughs> but he smelled like cotton candy because he was vaping. So I, it kind of threw me off. <laughs> Like, you are super confusing me, sir. <laughs> Sorry, so many details, but it's true. All of it's true. So, so we're standing over there while they're trying to get the, pole, the, the, the camper in, taken away from the pole. I end up talking to these guys, the, the cotton candy guy and his son and everything. And I start, I'm literally like, well, I got, I got their attention. I should share the gospel. So I start talking about church and Hope City and I start talking about the Lord and the things of God, and I start telling them that I'm going to have favor. I'm literally prophesying. I'm going to have favor. They're like, man, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I've heard it takes months to years to fix things like that. I'm like, not me. Not me. I'm going to have favor. So they end up towing it over to the place, and I pull in, and the GM walks out. True story. He walks out and says, hey, pastor, met you last year. And he said, do you remember I told you that I went to high school with Joel Osteen? And I said, I actually do. I remember you telling me that. And he kind of stared off and he goes, kindest man I've ever known. And I said, he really is the kindest person ever. And he said, no, honestly, I wouldn't be walking with the Lord if it wasn't for him. And he said, your family last year, your kids and your wife and you, you left that type of impact on all of us here. And he said, let me see what kind of favor I can give you. See, what I didn't realize was I planted seeds a year ago planted seeds a year ago, and we were about to walk in that harvest of that seed planting a year ago. We were about to walk in that harvest a year later. You can't stop God's favor, but you can block it. What if we'd have walked up in there a year before, like entitled? What if we'd have walked in like, we want the best deal. Can't you see I'm saved? I got a fish on my truck. I don't. I have a Sasquatch sticker. That's true. But what if we'd have walked in entitled and been rude to everybody? What if they'd have been like, geez, we want these people to leave. No, we sowed seeds a year ago. Now we're walking in the favor of those seeds. And he said, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to trade your damaged camper in as if it's not damaged. And we're going to upgrade you. Come on, somebody, to a brand new camper so that your summer's not ruined. I'm telling you, don't get in the way of the favor of God in your life. God wants to unlock so many incredible things in your marriage, in your family. And I feel like so many times in our humanity, we mess it up because we can't decrease John chapter three, verse 30 says, I need you to become greater and greater as I become less. Will you close your eyes just for a moment? God, I thank you today for supernatural favor. I wanna challenge you with a 90 day favor challenge. All of our locations, everybody watching online here, here at West Houston, I, I want you to start looking into the details of your life and I want you to start looking at, I had favor there. God, you showed up for me there. And I want you to start noticing the big things and the little things. I got a great parking spot, favor. I got a good deal at a grocery store, favor. I had a pay it forward moment at a drive through at Starbucks, favor. I got a negotiated bill or a debt wave, favor. A raise at work or a promotion, favor. Healing in my body, a diagnosis was reversed, favor. Breakthrough in my family or my marriage, favor. Deliverance and freedom, restoration, favor. I'm telling you, God is doing more in your life 
and all throughout your life than you know. And when you're intentional about noticing, you'll see God's hand of favor all throughout every area of your life, whether it's a valley moment or a waiting season, you can still see his hand of favor. Would you stand your feet? Lift your hands towards heaven. If you truly wanna walk in God's favor, recognize it's not about you. It's not, it's not about who you are. It's about who he is through you. And when you seek after him and pursue him and you're obedient to him, you surrender and live that open-handed life wherever God leads you. I'm telling you, his favor will follow you. Can we just thank him? Can we just thank him for favor? Can we just thank him for doors that have opened, assignments that you're walking in? Can you thank him for doors he closed to protect you? That's favor. Relationships that you should have never been in, that he removed from your life, Ooh, that's favor. That situation, that low place that he pulled you up out of when everybody else ran out on you, that's favor. That situation you were in, it could have ruined your entire destiny and he breathed new life into you, that's favor. Holy Spirit, we need you today more than ever. Move in our families, move in our marriages, move in our individual lives, move in every single folk in the room, move God in every person so that when we walk out of the room or we're watching online, God, that we unanimously agree that your hand was moving. God, we will pursue you with more of a relentless pursuit. We will pursue you with more of an intentional pursuit and we will start noticing every detail We'll start looking into all the intricacies of every area that you've showed up. Because you're a big God that can provide. You're a big God that can heal. You're a big God that will move mountains on our behalf, but you also care about the little things. Unlock joy again. Unlock confidence again. Unlock greater faith and unstoppable favor. In Jesus' name, with your hands down, every eye closed just for a moment. Here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons, but we pray because the Bible says in Romans 10, verse nine and 10, to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. And when you do, everything changes. Or maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, the truth is, I used to walk with God, but I, I, I fell away and I wanna rededicate my life. I haven't experienced his goodness. I haven't been experiencing his favor. It feels like my whole life is out of order, but today I wanna give my life to Jesus. If you're watching online, you can type in the chat, yes to Jesus. If you're in the room here at Katie or at Woodlands, we're gonna pray. I'm gonna count to three. And if that's you, I wanna give my life to Jesus or rededicate my life. I'm gonna count to three. And when I say three, I want you to lift up your hand with boldness. Listen, it's God's job to change you but it's our job to walk with you and walk with you in a discipleship way so that you can grow. Our service hosts are gonna come out at the end and give you some more direction because you do have a next step. But if you're here today and you say, I wanna give my life to Jesus or rededicate my life. One, today's my day. Two, Daniel, you're talking about me. Three, lift up your hand. I'm looking all over the room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, 20, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Man, hands are all the way. I see you right here. 27, 20. I see you guys, the couple back here. Thank you. I want everybody from all of our locations, wherever you're watching in the world and here in this room, pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me and it hasn't worked. From today on, I choose to live for you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your favor. I repent for all my wrongdoings and I ask for your forgiveness. From this moment on, I choose to live for you. You're my Father, you're my Savior, and you're my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, give God praise.